All right, welcome everyone. This is our 5 p.m. briefing. Uh, today is Saturday. I have a lot of information for you uh, at this point. Uh, only starting with, I have changed my shirt. So, beyond that, um, I have some new flow data for you. Uh, and I will get that to you right now. Uh, if I can find it, the email. I just had it. There it is. Okay. So, good news, good news, good news. The Elbow River before, below the Glenmore Dam uh, is falling as planned. Uh, at our last briefing, we were at 550 cubic meters per second. We're down to 400 cubic meters per second. Keep in mind, this is still higher than anyone has ever seen the Elbow River, uh, but it is going certainly in the right direction. And we anticipate that by late afternoon tomorrow, we will be at that magic 170 cubic meters per second number. The magic 170 cubic meters per second number means that we're no longer overflowing the Glenmore Dam. It's still a very, very high water point. Uh, for the Elbow River, but it signals a return to our ability to control the flow. Uh, so that's the Elbow. The Bow River uh, is falling below the Bears Spot Dam, as I love this phrase, falling very gently. Um, it is declining, uh, but it's declining extremely slowly. And um, it was 1600 uh, the last time we spoke. It is now at 1550. We anticipate it will stay at 1550 or close to. That's probably just an error, frankly. Um, it will stay uh, at that level or close to for the next 24 hours, as we told you last time. That means that the combined flow, uh, starting at Alderman Cross House in Inglewood, uh, is uh, now 2,000 cubic meters per second. It was at 2,200 cubic meters per second uh, this morning. So, I got a bunch of numbers for you, uh, a bunch of news for you, I should say. First of all, we're still in a state of emergency. Although we have turned the corner, we're still in a state of emergency. Our only priority remains the safety of all citizens. The situation is very dynamic. So I will say to citizens once again, stay well away from the river. Stay with rivers. Stay well away from the rivers. Stay well away from flooded areas and from bridges. And be careful around standing water. Even if the standing water appears calm, we don't know what's below the surface. The surface. I have some good news. Uh, even better news, as a matter of fact. I'm announcing now that residents of the following communities can now return to their homes. In Quarry Park, residents of all 156 evacuated dwellings are allowed to return. In River Bend, Residents of all 42 dwellings that were evacuated are allowed to return. Alderman Jones will be very happy because his house guests are among those. <laughs> Small one in Douglas Dale, there were five dwellings that were evacuated. Those people can go home now. In Deer Run, residents of all 444 dwellings that were evacuated are also allowed to return. And speaking of Deer Run, uh, the alderman uh, for Ward 14, Alderman Peter Devon, has asked me to remind people that there never was an evacuation in Chaparral Valley. Uh, if there are people who are out of their homes there, they too can return immediately. Now, I also want so uh, I also want to share with you this beautiful high-tech map over here. Uh, this is the first and only time uh, at the City of Calgary that purple means bad. Um, so, what we're going to do uh, is show you the areas of downtown that have been reopened. Would you mind being my man of white here? Um, so. A portion of downtown has been reopened, uh, including the area north of the CPR tracks, uh, up to 6th Avenue Southwest, west of 2nd Street Southwest. So areas like the Core Shopping Center and Bankers Hall are in that area. Okay? Um, so that's a good chunk, uh, and that is now reopened. Uh, and people who live there are can return home as well. In addition, we have reopened areas south of the tracks, west of 7th Street. Uh, the neighborhood of Kanot, uh, the West, the West Belt Line now, uh, that is reopened. Anyone who's out of there uh, can go home now. So that's very big, uh, very big changes, very big news. We have closed the reception centers at Canopy Park this morning and also at St. Francis High School. We still have 925 guests uh, who are staying in the reception centers, uh, but that number as well is going down. Our next big set of messages to people who are returning home, and we'll be providing these just as soon as we can, uh, are messages to people who are returning home on how to deal with materials that have been damaged by floodwaters. Uh, and we'll be in touch with some very detailed information on that soon. 
Uh, this morning we talked about restricted access on 11th and 12th Avenue Southwest. I just want to clarify, uh, uh, because I know there was a bit of confusion, that that's not an evacuation of those areas. That's local traffic only uh, in those areas. Um, and we will give you details very, very soon about plans for the work week uh, on Monday, and particularly about plans involving the status of schools. Uh, and we'll have that information to you uh, very, very quickly. Again, we still understand local emergency. People should still be ready for the possibility of power outage, and in particular, I want to remind you of our messages around water. Um, one of the most important things people can do right now is to help ease the strain on our water system. Uh, so continue to follow water restrictions. We've had some very good response since we announced that this morning. But I'd like to reach out to my fellow citizens and say, continue your water restrictions. Don't wash your car. Uh, leave the laundry. Um, don't run the dishwasher unless it's completely full. And let's take some of the strain off of the water treatment plant. So once again, the quality of drinking water remains excellent. Um, it is safe. It is clean. Uh, my colleagues in that area are working incredibly hard on making all of this work. Did I miss anything, Chief? Sure. All right, you see a new face up here, uh, our acting fire chief. Uh, Andrew's look is here. Uh, if you have any questions, we're happy to take them. Ross? So, any questions for the mayor? Or Yeah, those, those numbers have not changed very much. Um, a lot of these areas were areas that were relatively unaffected, um, but we are opening them for people. We continue our work, which is really building by building work, um, to start to clear up and dry out those transformers uh, and continue to allow power to return to those areas. But I continue to believe that uh, the earliest we can see uh, the majority of downtown uh, working again really is um, at the earliest midweek. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Sorry, Russ, that's your job. <laughs> uh, you sit out in the guy pointing. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, listen, we asked this morning, and I know this is very preliminary uh, early times, but in terms of getting an assessment of what has actually happened in the city, the damage that's been sustained, and you know, we've seen the amount of people who discovered the top of that sort of thing. Where are you guys on an estimate with that? And can you even start to begin to hit a price tag on this? Uh, no. Uh, basically, the price tag is lots and lots. Um, there's a lot of property damage out there. I should correct one thing, and I'm looking at our director, Rose Ryan Justin, on this one. I'm not aware of any bridges that are gone. Um, there certainly are a number that are impassable, but. What bridges are there? We have shot from that area. What have you got for us on that? Right? The, only, the only thing that, was, uh, that we lost was one of the foot bridges down at Stampede, but other than that, there's no. There's one of the other bridges. And the, and the Elbow River farther upstream, but other than that, all of the vehicle bridges are all yeah, holding yeah. up. Yeah, oh, okay. sir. Yeah, the first yeah. foot bridges are yeah. obviously not going to be a key priority. That's all that I'm aware of. Uh, I'm just asking at city property. Yeah, so no, that's fair. That's fair. Again, we're, I have to remind you that uh, I was watching some of the media today, and people are like, Calgary begins recovery process. Well, we are beginning the recovery process, but we are still in a state of emergency. Uh, we are still in a state of emergency. We are still making sure that people are safe and people are not hurt. Uh, that assessment will follow. Those conversations about how we pay for all of this will follow. Uh, there is a lot of damage. Uh, I don't want to be too uh, too uh, too optimistic about that. There is a lot of damage, uh, and we will figure out how we're going to fix it uh, and how we're going to pay for it. But again, that process of reconstruction is something that we're measuring now in, in, in some places in weeks and months. In the in the communities that you just announced, where people start returning home. Do you have a sense of what kind of damage they can expect in those homes? Is it mostly flooded basements? Are there no flooding at all? It really does vary community by community. Uh, remember that our criteria for reopening the community is that the power is safe uh, and the water is receded. Uh, so some people, and I, and I know people are anxious, uh, and certainly some people, uh, will return home, thanks God, to no damage at all. Uh, a lot of people will return to wet basements, uh, and then we will uh, see how they do uh, from there on in. I imagine that the neighborhoods we're talking about, people will be able to, to manage that business relatively well. Any questions? Any questions? I just wondering about what, what you guys have said that the water is, is all safe. Some people have said when they drink, that they can taste um, sort of a flavor. Yeah. Anybody want to jump in on that one? Uh, here's, uh, I'll, I'll call down. 
Thanks. That, that's a very good question. Um, as you can imagine, the, uh, the quality and the, the, the challenge of the, uh, of the water coming into the treatment plants is, is significantly different than we uh, have seen ever. On the level of not just silt, but also the level of, of organics in the water. And you know, I noticed myself, there is, there is a slight uh, taste uh, to that change in our drinking water. It meets all water quality parameters. You know, what we're tasting <coughs> is, um, is our disinfectant missing, uh, mixing with that uh, organic matter, which creates a, a bit of a taste. But uh, it has nothing to do with the health uh, effect of the water. The, the water is absolutely safe to drink. Thanks, Any questions? question about the downtown. Yes. Yes, we we're reopening the areas where there is power. Now, there may be a couple of isolated pockets here and there, but they should. Now, keep in mind, though, this doesn't mean everyone rush downtown. Um, you know, access is still, although there is access to those areas, access is still very challenging. But as people, you know, if people live there, they can return home. Uh, and the folks who are running those buildings, uh, if they want to get in there to do some assessments and begin to clean up work if there is any needed, uh, they can do that. Now. So, likely, if somebody's working in that Uh, we'll have some more information on Monday plans going forward. Uh, it'll take a little while to run the assessment. My preference and uh, my message to employers is even if it's ready, our transportation system access will not be ready. So we should continue having essential workers only downtown, have people work from home where possible, uh, and get people a green day uh, when needed. All right, any other questions? Yes, one question. Uh, well, you know, um, I, I've been completely overwhelmed by the generous spirit of people who want to volunteer, who want to provide donations. So uh, we are, the Red Cross is accepting monetary donations if you want to give cash. Uh, and the information you can find out about that is on calgary.ca. Uh, there will be a number of other local agencies uh, that will find themselves doing a lot of work over the next few weeks that will be able to accept your generosity. Um, donations of items, uh, I would ask you to hold, hold off on those right now, um, just because it's better to assess the situation first, and no one wants a situation where people do clothing drives or something like that and find that there's not much need for it. So let's hold off on those for now. Um, I will tell you that if you have specialized skills or specialized equipment, if you're a construction company that has heavy equipment or pumps, things like that, uh, then please do be in touch. Uh, and we will uh, we'll figure out the right way to utilize those services. And by the way, I should say that generosity extends across the nation. Uh, we are so happy to have had assistance not only from our close neighbors in places like Edmonton, but from across the country. Uh, cities like Vancouver and Toronto are mobilizing to figure out how they can help us. And I just loved the call that I received today uh, from the Minister of Transportation from Prince Edward Island who said, we know about bridges. Uh, our chief engineer and his staff are available uh, to help you with those assessments, which is fabulous. So, and we've just been joined by Alderman Jim Stevenson, uh, who's been out at the evacuation centers all day, meeting with citizens. Thanks for being here, Jim. Um, and so that generous spirit uh, is great, and as I've been telling people all day, rest up. Uh, as we get through this clean, uh, cleanup process, we're going to need to rely, as we always have, on the volunteer spirit of Calgary, and so we'll find ways to get people involved. Are you able to talk specifically about what's going on in Inglewood right now? Our understanding is that maybe a, a piece of the land there may waste away or erode off into this river? Um, I don't have a lot of specific details on that right now. I can tell you that Inglewood is one of our priority neighborhoods. Uh, we are assessing it very, very carefully at the moment. Uh, and I hope to have an announcement on Inglewood a little bit later uh, this evening. But uh, Chief, is there anything else we can share at this time? Um, <coughs> The issue in Inglewood is an erosion issue, um, where the bike path and part of the uh, pavement's paved surface at the end of a cul-de-sac is impacted. Um, we do have engineers out doing assessments right now that have made recommendations on how to stabilize that bank as much as we can. But what it underscores is the messaging that's been, been repeated by the mayor, and uh, I've repeated, a number of people stood here and repeated and shared with Calgarians is, there's fast-moving water in the bow, and that, that fast-moving water is over a wider area than the Bono, more normally Burlington, and we're seeing underscoring of the banks, and we are seeing erosion in a few places in the city of Calgary. So as people return to the downtown core and other areas of Calgary, please 
be very careful, stay well back from the bank. Some of that underscoring can come back 10, 12 feet from what looks like a perfectly safe surface to stand on. Uh, we don't have the resources right now to go out and assess and fence every single one of those areas, so we ask people to continue to be safe. Thanks, Chief, and I'll, I'll just add to that, because uh, this is the first briefing that I haven't said this in, so I'll say it again. The single best thing you can do for the city right now is to stay home um, and to restrict your travel to uh, essential travel only, go out and get groceries, go out and get supplies, uh, and stay close to home. Uh, just don't strain the road, the transportation, and the other infrastructure. Let the emergency workers continue to do their work. You said that uh, people with specialized experience should contact so What's the best way for them to do that? Uh, what is the best way for them to do they that? They go to the City of Calgary website, go to the emergency management page, and there's an email address on the bottom which comes right into the EOC. Mm -hmm. And we'll get that email address to you, and, and we'll get this information to you as well. Uh, the super high tech props behind me uh, are literally the planning maps off the walls uh, because we wanted to make sure that we were sharing with you information that's up to the second, uh, and that's what we've got. Question for uh, Deputy Tuzla. Uh, I understand there may have been a water rescue or two today. Um, since Thursday, uh, the Calgary Fire Department has been performing numerous water rescues. They range from uh, people who have been swept away because they've been too close, people who got stranded and tried to cross on their own, to people stuck in homes, people with medical emergencies that needed uh, to get out to AHS. So uh, we have done, uh, we brought in extra boats and extra aquatic staff, and they have been steadily from start of day to early, late at night, going out from call to call getting people. So yes, there have been numerous ones. Any further questions? Um, you mentioned the number of homes that people are allowed to return to. Do you have a hard mm -hmm. number on the amount of people that are not allowed to return to the homes at this point? Um, we can find, the question was, uh, I just got a text saying that folks watching home can't hear the question, so sorry for not repeating them. The question was, do we have a sense of how many homes are still under evacuation? Um, and uh, when I look at my little map and look at the, num the numbers I've given you, oh, like 73, 74,000. So it's still very big numbers. One more, I might be jumping the gun here, but in terms of, of Monday and, and the city services uh, recycling, garbage pickup and so on, are, are you already working on alternative arrangements given that some of the, the major arteries in the city have been so clogged? Yes, of course we are. Um, and we will have information for citizens on how all of that will work probably uh, over the course of the day tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are a number of things around city services as the work week starts uh, that we will get to. and. What you'll find over the briefings, knock on wood, um, over the course of the next 24 to 48 hours, is we'll really start to focus on what now and what happens next. We set up a recovery operations center already, uh, and we will continue to uh, move, move forward on where we go from here. Sorry, one last question. Yes. Uh, uh, we can, so the question was, is there more, are there more communities coming? Uh, and the answer, so, Chief, did you want to jump in? Thank you. The, uh, so, yes, you will get some more news tonight. Uh, we continue to do our assessments street by street in the neighborhoods, and we're hopeful that we'll get three more neighborhoods, uh, or at least portions of three more neighborhoods uh, tonight, and we'll get that information out the moment that decision is made. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your patience in this. Thank you for all your work in continuing to share these stories and this important information with our audience.